Welcome back to Trimble Forensics Tech Tip Tuesdays. In last week's episode, we went out and mapped an intersection using the Trimble SX-10, and at the end of the video, we showed a vehicle crossing the intersection at night. Now, if you look closely, you may have noticed that the camera was panning around the reveal scene. Well, that's what we're going to cover in this week's episode, how to create animated fly-throughs of your reveal scenes. We'll get started right after the break, so stick around. If you use a laser scanner, you can do fly-throughs in Trimble RealWorks Forensic to show your point clouds in motion. To learn how to do that, head on over to Official TRW and Jason Hayes will show you how it's done. We highly recommend Jason's tutorial and we'll leave a link to it in the description below. To fly through our diagrams, however, let's open up Reveal and get started. So I have my four-way intersection loaded up and I have a Dodge Charger here that's at the bottom of my screen. So I'll jump out of 2D into 3D and I'll hit play. And we can see our car taking off. Now this is well and good to see it from a static 3D view, but we would like to add some motion to this. So I've created a layer here called camera. And what I'm going to do is go to my models uh, inventory here. And I have downloaded a video camera from the uh, SketchUp Warehouse. Now you don't have to use a video camera. You could use a bullet casing. You could use a chair. Uh, you could use any vehicle that you wanted or any object that you wanted to do this. However, for this demonstration, I'm going to use my video camera. So what I'm going to do is place my video camera down. This is going to be easier to do in a top-down view. So I'm just going to place my video camera here. I'm going to hit the escape key so I'm not adding another camera. This is video camera eight. Now for video camera eight, what I want to do in my actions is I want to add a motion path. Now from here, I'm going to turn my snaps off and I'm just going to hit my C key on my keyboard and I'm going to hold that and I'm just going to create a spline curve just curving around my scene. And when I'm done, I hit the escape key and we're set to go. Now when I click on my motion path and I select it, we'll see that it's all just about the same height. Close enough for me anyway. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to jump into 3D view and we'll notice that our motion path is on level with our ground. Well, we want this to be an elevated shot. So I'm going to find my blue grab handle here and my green arrow above it. And I'm going to take that whole motion path and move it up and to about 38 feet. It'll be a good distance. Okay, so for my events, my first event, which is where it starts, I want to slow this down just a little bit. By default, it has it at 30 miles an hour. I'm just going to slow it down to 10. I'm going to scroll back up, go to my second event, which is where it ends, and I'm also going to have that be a 10 mile an hour movement along my path. Now, the next thing I need to do is change the way that this rotates. So I'll move up just a little bit. And we'll look at our camera and you'll see right now it's pointed down the motion path and by default it's going to look down the path but we don't want it to look at the path we want it to look at the intersection so we need to rotate this by 90 degrees so for my first event which is my start i'm going to yaw this at 90 degrees and you'll notice now the camera is turned around 90 degrees now, it's also pointing straight, and I don't want it to point straight, I want it to point down. So I'll pitch this down just a little bit, say around 345 degrees. And that's not quite enough. Make that about 335. Yeah, that's looking down right about where I need it to. So 90 degrees and 335 degrees. I will copy that over to my second event. So my yaw is 90, my pitch is 335. And we should be set. So it's going to follow this look all the way around that path. So the next thing I need to do 
is I need to deselect the motion path and I need to select the camera itself. And in my actions, I need to attach a camera. Now the attaching of the camera can be done to any model. But for the camera, I want this to be camera position five and I want this to be a shoulder attachment. And then when I click OK, so now that I have everything set up, what I need to do is press the play button in the bottom and press the five key. And this will let us look at our intersection as the camera is panning around. Now it's a little choppy with my graphics card. Um, this card and its hardware doesn't really do a real nice job of blending the frames together. However, when you record a video, that's going to take all of that chop out of there. Again, I'm going to hit the play button again. And you can see here, we're just moving around our curve. So say we want to add a little bit of a change here. So I want to select my motion path. And what I want to do is I want to start off panned about 350 degrees. So we'll be looking a bit more straight up. And then by the end, I want to be looking more downward. So I'm going to have it be looking at 320 degrees down. And just to exaggerate a little bit, we'll make it 310 instead. Now when I click play, the camera pans down as it moves along the path. So if we'd like to change the path that this is taking, I would like to change the way that this is moving around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this around right around here and add just a little bit more intersection coverage. And I want to move up into this area. So again, the camera's looking down the further it goes down the path. So I would like it to look down at the roadway as it flies over. So I'll smooth these out just a little bit. And the key to making this look really nice is to have broad sweeping curves and not have any abrupt changes in your in your direction that your camera's traveling. So now when I click play, and we rotate around, we follow the car for a little while, and then we began looking uh, just about straight down at some point in our intersection that we find useful. So I've stopped my animation and we've now got a fly around of our intersection. What I'd like to do next is add another camera and this one will fly directly overhead as the car is going by. So I'm going to add another camera. So my models, I'm going to grab another camera and I'm going to place it on my pavement. And when I select my camera, I'm going to add a motion path. Now this is going to be easier done in 2D. So my actions, I'm going to add a motion path. And this time what I'm going to do is move just right around to the end of the intersection. So right around here. I hit the escape key to stop placing motion path nodes. And we're set. So I'm going to take my video camera 8 and I'm going to turn that off just so it's a little less confusing here. So we have video camera 9 that we're working with right now. And what I want to do is I want to recreate a UAV shot of the camera moving over this section of roadway but pointing straight down. So what I'll do is I will select my motion path and I'll now drag it up right around 70 feet or so. I'm going to get too exact. So 69.9 is going to be close enough for me. So with our camera sitting there, in my events, I'm going to slow this down. Instead of a 30 mile an hour velocity, I'll give it a 10 mile an hour velocity at the beginning and a 10 mile an hour velocity at the end. My first event, which will be where it starts, we have the camera looking along my path. What I want to do is I want to pitch this down 270 degrees so the camera is looking straight down. And on my second one, which is my end, I'm also going to pitch it down 270 degrees so it's looking straight down. 
Next, what I'm going to do is select my camera, and in my actions, I'm going to attach a camera. I'm going to make this one camera six, and we're getting a preview of what that camera will see. I like how that looks, so I'm going to click OK. And now when I hit play and tap on the number six key, I'm now flying over my scene a lot like a UAV would. And can see your car drive through. Now I'm going to turn both of my camera visibilities on. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to zoom out. And you notice that we have these two motion paths. Now we don't really want these red lines to be visible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this motion path. And if you scroll down or in our actions, I should say, what we can do is we can hide the motion path. And for our other camera, we are going to hide our motion path. So now we don't see any motion paths. When I press play, I'm going to cycle back and forth between camera views five and six just using my keyboard. And this does allow you to look at the scene as it's moving from different viewpoints if you do want to do that. Hopefully this tip will help you enhance your presentations and help you explain your analysis of your case. If you found this video to be helpful, be sure to hit the like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. Stay safe, and I'll see you next week.